Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here. Today in honor of Black History Month, we are going to be looking at this great big book called The Quilts of G's Bend. This book is very important to me. The story is important to me. The story is important to American history, to black history, to the history of folk art in America. It's, it's really, really amazing, the story of these people. Um, Quilts uh, from G's Bend was published by uh, Tinwood Books. Um, and G's Bend is now known in Alabama as Boykin, um, which, is, which is near Selma. It's kind of closer towards the coast, you know, on the lower kind of third of the state. Um, it's named after a man, Joseph Yee. Um, he moved there to start a plantation. He had some slaves with him. That property transferred to Mark Petway in the 1840s. And after emancipation, the slaves that were free and their families stayed in the area. Now, G's Bend is special geographically because it's enclosed on three sides, like in a horseshoe, by the Alabama River. So it's very isolated. It is um, still today majority black community. Um, a lot of the people there can trace their roots back to the slaves that were originally on the plantation. So there's a lot of history there. I've always believed, and I, I still believe now, that these women made these quilts because of the freedom they had by not having to worry as much as other African American black families did at the time because they were enclosed. They were by themselves. This was a community. There was one way in, there was one way out. I mean, that had to bring them some kind of peace of mind. So, if you want to learn more about that, there are articles, there are books. It's it's very well documented, the entire history. I'm here to talk about the quilts, because if it wasn't for the quilts, I wouldn't know the history. Um, this quilt on the cover, I mean, it's hard to even put into words why these quilts me meant so much to me. They mean so much to me. Why they meant so much to everyone and still do to, to this day. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go through this a little bit. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to sit here and read the whole book to you. But um, yeah, this is a, a very, very good, very good read if you're interested. Let's see. I don't know that this book actually has an author. Okay. John Beardsley, William Arnett, Paul Arnett, Jane Livingston, introduced by Alvia Wardlaw, forward by Peter Mazzario. It just has a lot of really nice pictures on here. So yeah, there's a, this is mostly what we're going to be focusing on. And these were women... I think there's a big contrast between what was going on in like the Victorian era in the North for well-off white families where women were making crazy quilts out of the velvet that was left over from their clothes or the silks, or they were incorporating their needlework and, you know, they would practice their embroidery to impress a man, to get a husband. And in the South, in G's Bend, all these women wanted to do was to keep their children warm because they lived in shacks with no power, no water, no electricity, you know, they were just trying to survive and ended up turning out some of the most important African-American art this country has seen. And some of the most important folk art this country has seen. So here's a quote from the cover over here. Now, <clears throat> you think, all these people, like this is Plummet Petway, Loretta Petway, all these slaves that were freed while Petway owned the plantation ended up taking his name, um, which is interesting because a lot of, you know, a lot of them are still to this day in that area. Their quilts became very popular in like the 60s. They were making these way long before that, but they became very popular in the 60s because I mean, just looking at them, you're like, okay, it's a bunch of fabric, but they were so graphic. 
they were so geometric in their design. Um, they really said something to the folk art movement that was happening at the time. And I just think, I mean, they're not square. They're not flat. They're not, you know, it's just, it's so, the graphicness of them. A lot of them were made out of old clothes. There's a lot of like denim in here, uh, which is the same thing a lot of people did during the depression with like flower sack quilts. But they made those into pretty patterns. These are just, let me get something that's big enough to cover up me and my husband or me and my kids or whoever. Swampland. Here's a sort of modified log cabin. House top nine top nine black log cabin variation. She was born in 1929, Jesse T. Petway. Uh, circa 1960, and a corduroy borders in 1975. Jesse T. Petway, again, is another um, log cabin variation. Circa 1975. America Irby. One patch with patterning tied. So this one was tied. You can, you can't really, you're not, probably not going to be able to see that. Um, tying a quilt is when there's just th uh, thread or yarn or something. Just attaching them together instead of being like actually quilted. Here's the old cable ferry. Um, interesting thing about this is that once black people were able to vote, the people from G's Bend had to go into the um, Camden, maybe? Uh, I think it was Camden, Alabama. And because they didn't want the black people to have a vote, they shut down the ferry and G's Bend went with that one until like the 90s. Um, so yeah, there's some of the houses, you know, they're just in their cabins and little shacks. Oh, and here's a good, there's Wilcox County down here, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia. So it's above the panhandle. And then this is... G's Bend is right here, so it's inside of here is where everything was happening. So I guess to get to here, you would have to go like all the way around, which is why they had the ferry there. This is all the history. Students began busing 50 miles after Pine, who, Pine Hill School burns. 1992, America's Black Belt elects its first African-American congressman since Reconstruction. Late 1990s, announcements to plan to build new ferry and reestablish a service on the LA Alabama River between G's Bend and Camden. Yeah, Camden. That's what it was. So these are what some of the houses are looking like today. I think this house burned down or was torn down. Yeah, the uh, home of the Petways now, home of the Petways now inhabited by. I'm not going to say that word just because that's not my word to say. At G's Bend, Alabama. Petway Plantation when it was a residence of John Henry Miller, the estate foreman. This is um, a variation of the N-word. Baptism. Mercantile store in 2000. Post office and abandoned building. 
I need one of those things that make my fingers go. So this is a very rural community. Here are some more of the quilts. 1984. 1955, 1973. This is a rug, a hooked rug. This is just more scraps again. These are the ones that I was like so taken with because it's just, I mean, it's, it was 1965 wool knit linen polyester double knit cotton drapery material like using whatever they had to make do 1970 cotton rayon polyester double knit acetate okay fingers i have arthritis guys i'm sorry um Again, I mean, it's just, it's like, everyone you look at is just like so striking visually. This was 1975 and it's all corduroy. Can you imagine piecing that by hand, most likely? Oh, she said that they were hand, hand pieced or not. Oh, Loretta Petway, born 1942. This was made in a 1960 synthetic knit and cotton sacking material. Simply quilted. Lazy Gal, that's what it's called. Born 1923. Circa 1975. It's corduroy by Arlonzia Petway. I think this is where we get into like the more gallery stuff. Okay, these are the ones made from a lot of denim. Um, a lot of old work clothes, men and women. Blocks and stripes, work clothes quilt, circa 1935. Wow. Oh. Look at this with the patches. Born 1908, Rachel Carey George. This is her in 2000. Okay. And it's 92 in 2000. Um, my mama worked until she was about 90 and her mind kind of slowed down. She didn't want to slow down. She even tried to climb trees until we stopped her and she kept on quilting. Oh. Denim, wool trousers, mattress, ticking, and cotton. Petway, circa 1950, Missouri Petway, circa 1942. Missouri's daughter describes a quilt. It was when daddy died. I was 17, 18. He stayed sick about eight months and passed on. Mama said, I'm going to take his work clothes, shape them into a quilt to remember him and cover it up, cover up under it for love. She takes his old pant legs and shirt tails, takes all the clothes he had, just enough to make that a quilt, and help. And I helped her tore them up. 
bottom of the pants is narrow, top is wide, and she had me cut in the top part and shape them into even strips. imagine that these quilts pretty much kept you warm and I don't think the majority of them had batting in the inside just because that wasn't something you know that was available they were probably just more layers of fabric denim and cotton polyester is a Polly Bennett born in 1922 this is a two-sided quilt from 1942 Amelia Bennett 1950s Annie Bendoff Sue William Setzler Seltzer look at her look at her outfit Geraldine Westbrook. Jesse T. Petway. Born 1929. Peace in 1950. Helen McLeod, 1965. Every one of these pages is stuck together, y'all. Aunt Sally, old midwife, the only doctor or nurse ever heard of in G's Bend before the project started. Before the project was started. just trying to keep their families warm and these quilts are I mean I have no words Annie Mae Young 1965 these are all Annie Mae Youngs I mean, just, it, it makes you think, like, did she sit down and think that this was a deliberate choice? To, like, oh, well, here's a, here's, I just grabbed a piece of red, let me put it over here, and now I'm out of the yellow, so I'm going to use some more of the red over here. Oh. Oh, she made the one on the cover. Born 1928, work cloth, denim. Um, work cloth quilt with center medallion of strips 1976 denim corduroy synthetic blend breeches legs with pockets i love this one i love this one too this is all corduroy these are they're all going to be variations on the log cabin which is the center square Oh, that green 
these colors. <laughs> it's like the colors, the tones, the the um, the coordination or lack thereof. It's just. Wow. Housetop nine block log cabin variation. I wonder why they called it housetop. Because it was uh, maybe the roof. I, I don't remember reading that. Or I read this book a long time ago. This is a pretty. Um... Ooh. Seventh impression, two thousand seven. Lottie Mooney, nineteen forty. Lucy T. Petway, nineteen forty five. photographer for Farm Security Administration circa 1940. All these pictures came from that Farm Security Administration when they went down there for oh, I don't know. Sue Willie Seltzer born 1922 quote was made 1955. This is circa 1975. Cotton. Irene Williams made several quilts that contained fabric printed with the word vote. Wilcox County had been the scene of a fierce voting rights struggle in the 1960s. That's when they took away the, um, the ferry. Because uh, those triangles look better than ones I could make on machine. Sally Bennett Jones, 45, Sadie Bell Nelson, 65, Indiana Bendoff Petway, 45, Patty Ann Williams, 55, 
snowball. It's a quilt maker's name. Circa 1950. Can you imagine sewing those curves by hand? I mean, curves usually are easier to sew by hand, but still, that's um, how big is this? Is like 83 by 85 inches? Good God! Good God! made a Lone Star quilt, a text, you know, it's the same thing. Um, that's impressive. And they didn't have rotary cutters back then. Rotary cutters are fairly recent. When they did quilting back in the 70s and the 80s and stuff, they had cardboard templates where you would trace it onto the, onto the fabric and then cut it out, which makes this even more impressive. Several of the fabrics are remnants from dresses Essie made for herself and her mother, Mary Elizabeth Bendoff. Oh yeah, there she is in the dress. Look at that. Born 1917, and here she is in 2001, out working in a field. death, Nettie Young, born 1917's father, married her friend, quilt maker Deborah Young. At age 85, Nettie Young continues to tend to the farmland surrounding her home, one of the original project houses built in the late 1930s. I think that's what they were down there. Um, the Farm Security Administration or whatever it is was down there taking pictures because they were building um, homes. Because something happened where um, the land was sold off and they divided it up and they built the homes for the people who were living there. Sierra's Corduroy. Linda Pedway. 1875 Corduroy. I cannot imagine hand sewing Corduroy. I like this one. It's tied. 1975. 1975. They may have had machines. I mean, these aren't, these definitely aren't machine quilted. They're hand quilted, but they might have been piece by machine, but I don't think so. Oh. That color, though. I mean, look, the, the sandy yellow, the beige, the blue, just this one piece of red. Probably because she didn't have enough to, enough blue to go over here, so she put the red on there. And oh. the whole this whole video is me going. Oh. <gasps> China Petway, born 1952. It's called Blocks. It was made circa 1975. Corduroy cotton hap sacking, hop sacking, 83 by 70. One of G's Ben's leading gospel singers. One of the few locals who have attended college and returned to live in the community. This is watermelon right here. Log cabin and four block variation circa 1975. Luella Petway. I think it was originally 45. 45 slaves. When Joseph G had the plantation. So, I mean, it, may, it makes sense that when Petway bought it, or was sold it, or however it went down, I think it was to settle a debt, um, it would be a lot more than that. Emma May Hall Petway. Very nice. Yes, 
Casey Bendall Petway, Florine Smith. Look at her. Willie Mo Williams Abrams, 1970, court, courtesy of Louise Williams. Estelle Witherspoon managed the Freedom Quilting Bee from 1967 to the early 90s. Her mother, Ma Willie Abrams, was instrumental in keeping the bee afloat after its formative years and was known for sharing pattern blocks and designs with curated quilters such as a neighborhood girl, Flora Moore, Estelle's daughter, Louise William recalls Ma Willie. Ugh, I mean, that's just... These are, these are like, <laughs> this is something that you would get in Urban Outfitters for like $400. Urban Outfitters would do something creepy like that and steal somebody's design and mass produce it, huh? variation 1976 corduroy 81 by 89 inches this variation on lazy girl composed like the american flag is one of the most remarkable quilts created during the bicentennial i agree that is stunning oh and that's a, that's a good quilt to close the book out on that is beautiful those colors and i wonder if they knew i mean you'd like to think that they just kind of went in and were like, let's just do this. But I mean, these color choices and these designs are so graphic. Wow. If this is a book you can find, um, it is full of information. It was $50 when someone bought it for me. Um, it says fifty dollars up here. Let's just see real quick if it's on Amazon. Okay, um, it is on Amazon and it is two hundred seventy-nine dollars. So, um, good to know I have this in case I ever run into any fiduciary trouble. I don't think I would sell it for two hundred seventy-nine dollars. Wow. $279 and $649 shipping. And there it is right in front of me. Wow. Okay, so um, there are plenty of other books on G-Spend. <laughs> Unless you have, um, you know, that much money. And if you have that much money to spend on a book, maybe buy it and donate it to your library so other people can also enjoy it. Um, I might do that one day. <laughs> but right now, um, I love this book. I, I, I adore this book. Um, it's pretty hard to read because it's enormous and it's very heavy. But, um, yeah. So, I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, I was in Michael's and I saw their Black History... Their Black History Month section and I was just like, this is nonsense. There is so much to be celebrated. Uh, and if you are... Not, not even just a, a, a person of color, a, a black, a African-American, black, if you're any person of color, um, I know the last year and the last, uh, you know, several hundred years have been particularly hard, especially 2020. Um, but I am, I am, I am an ally. I am here for you and your history is so rich. So yeah, that's the quilt of G's Bend. Uh, you would probably find a lot of information online if you uh, don't have an extra $300 laying around, but if your library has this, check it out because it is full of information. Very, very informative, very inspiring. And I'm gonna leave this here because yeah, 
it makes me emotional just looking at it because they're all so I, I just I just can't get over whether or not they knew when they were making these things or if it was just like we just we really just want to stay warm or if it was a deliberate choice to put that one strip of red on the side that's fascinating to me and I will see you soon okay bye guys bye